the Bartels couldn't believe how fortunate they were to find Peyton. I adore children, Mrs. Bartell. But they didn't find her. She seems terrific. What's the catch? There is no catch. I think she's great. She chose them. Now, their innocence is her opportunity, their trust. Peyton's been great. Has she? I don't know what we would have done without her. Is her weapon the hand that rocks the cradle? But hey, folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Class of Cinematics. And we're joined as always with my co host, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, folks, man, so today we're going to be talking about a film that made a little bit of noise when it came out, man. It did. And um, we're going to be talking about The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. From 1992, and this film stars uh, Rebecca De Mornay and Annabella Sciorra, and they both kind of were um, coming off making some noise in this era. Um, yeah. Annabella Sciorra <coughs> does uh, Jungle Fever. I'm not sure if that was before or after this, but I mean, they 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 had to have been close, dog. Like, oh, well, they're close. So, Jungle Fever came out the previous year. And, there you go. Uh, so that okay. makes sense. Her getting a starring role in okay. this after that film, which mm-hmm. made a lot of noise. Also, we get Rebecca De Mornay, who was in some pretty big films. You know, a couple years before, you know, we got the Tom Cruise risky business and things of that nature. You know, coming off. You know, she had, she had a run. So, so also, it's interesting because in this film, she's playing the, the villain here, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is kind of a melodrama, uh, a little bit suspense thriller. You know, we got a family um, that um, hires a nanny. And the nanny has a peculiar background. There's a weird connection here. The nanny um, is was the wife of a doctor... Who was abusing his patients? Yeah, and then the story breaks, and he kills himself. Yeah, and this causes the nanny, played by Rebecca De Mornay, going to a spiral of depression, and she actually has a miscarriage Revenge! and loses her baby. Yeah, so ironically, um, uh, I forgot her name. In uh, let me see, in this, uh, her uh, name is Mrs. Mott, but then she goes by Peyton the nanny. Oh, uh, so Claire. Uh, oh, Claire's yeah, the, Claire. the family, the woman, yeah. So Claire but. happens to be the woman who actually exposed the doctor. She mm-hmm. took it to the press, and all of a sudden, all these other victims come out, mm-hmm. and he actually killed himself. He so did. that's what caused her to, you know, go upset and um, have a miss, um, car- carriage miss mock. So ironically, Claire is pregnant. She's about to have her baby. So, um,. Rebecca De Mornay's character, Miss Mott, just just goes psycho. She's like, "That's my baby. You owe me a baby. Yeah, you made well, me lose my baby. Well, pretty, you, pretty you ruined my life. Yeah, pretty <laughs> you know? much. I mean, she's like, she's she's because they they were gonna have their kids, you know, almost like around the same time. Yeah, and they um like yeah, uh, Rebecca De Mornay as Miss Mott. She's like, she's vengeful towards her. Like she's holding yeah. it against her. She's like, you know, I lost everything because of you. Not she's not even looking at what her husband yeah. did to uh <laughs> lead to him killing himself, lead yeah. to these multiple malpractice suits by all these other women. You know, the fact that he was doing these these sexual misconduct acts. But she's like, you know, because of this one woman, Claire, you cost me my husband, you cost me my baby, you cost me my home, you cost me my financial status. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So now I have nothing so yeah, I family, want my Livelihood. I want yours, and you I'm gonna start. You should have took newborn. that abuse quietly, laying yeah. down, man. Yeah, you should have just not said mm-hmm. nothing. No one likes a whistleblower. That's yeah. her mindset, you know. And it, almost as if Claire owes her something, which mm-hmm. is it's really just insane um, when you think about it. But you know, for me personally, like there's got to be a crazy person involved in this. Absolutely. Like, this is why we. This is the, like I don't know. I think I described this when we um, we yesterday or we texting back and forth. I was like, man, this would have been an '80s. Movie of the week. <laughs> like, yeah. like this would have been something that's on ABC in yeah. 1986, like this story. But it's 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 slightly elevated because of the star power involved, you know. Yes. And, and a lot of times, you know, with some of these films, this is what happens. There's nothing new under the sun. A lot of it isn't new under the story um telling umbrella. But if you could take some of these kinds of films which are called basic, basic genre yes. films or B films, and add some star power to it. It elevates it a little bit. Well, it gets it gets a different kind of eye put on it, and you make it make some money. But it, it it's working because of the sensationalization of it mm-hmm. and the, the the shit that like like all the buzz around this film was about twists and plots and just mm-hmm. the absurdity of it. But I don't think it's good in, in that regard because it's not like like there's some things like like especially first of all I'm like you a stay at home mom already. 
Yeah. Why do I mean, you need a nanny? Th- that's the thing to you know. So, so, since, so I'm so glad. I'm so, why you need a nanny? I'm so glad that we're gonna why take, you, why take you this giving this opportunity for this crazy. I mean, this, granted, I, I, I mean that is a little bit of victim blaming. This, but, but but still, just from a movie making standpoint, yes. it doesn't hold up. And and, and that's the thing. I'm like, so glad you touched on that. So we can try to find a way to make this make sense. Like you said, she's home all the time. So because you want to build a greenhouse right after you had a, your child, um, you need a, a full time 24 Man. hour. Nanny. And then wow. what makes it even worse for me, like Must this be is nice. This and I mean that what? in the most negative way, right? So <laughs> God um, bless her, it, <laughs> bless her soul. Yes. Uh, but, but, <laughs> what, what, what trips me out is that for her to, you know, to to, to seem to be so concerned about um, her children and and their safety and well being, there is no due process. I mean, all this woman does as Peyton is she stops the bus so Mama Claire can give her daughter a jacket and she's like oh by the way do you know where uh claire lives because you know i'm here for a job interview for a nanny she don't have no references she don't have no 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 <laughs> nothing going on I mean, she basically missed out fires this family in the worst way possible and after a dinner Man, like, and, a, like, and an earring falling out she to the next day dog she's not only is she there from nine to five dog she's an in-house nanny caretaker yeah, I'm sleeping not, in the basement i'm not a stickler for plot details but if it's standing out to me that there's big holes in this plot like even the way she comes in says oh I hang out with the other nannies and we've talked about you know nanny like talk at the park like, like yeah but but you're not going to be talking about my personal life because I didn't have a nanny before so why the fuck am I showing up in nanny circles and exactly. being talked about like oh they might need a nanny it <laughs> oh, don't make such no and sense. such is hiring down it the block no I mean sense. come on it, like, it, like it, it, <laughs> this film like or at least on that level it, it breaks down to me man we all have a thing called, you know, a gut feeling. Mm-hmm. And um, we all, you know, as humans, you know, I, I use the word the spidey sense. Okay. You get that, that feeling in your stomach. Something ain't right. As soon as this woman <laughs> makes her way into the home, everything that can go wrong does. Mm-hmm. Okay. I like, mean, it takes, I think, it takes, it takes um, Claire a while to get on board with that idea, but, but she does. And, but the husband never does. Yeah. Uh, he's jaded. He, he don't, <laughs> he don't, man, he don't, he ain't even in this thing. You know, every time I mean, we see him, he eating or he at work or he coming I from mean, work or he going to work. It, it just, it, it makes no sense to wild, me. Bro. Like, I mean, because like it really takes for, I mean, this work course, life balance people, the, 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 the course <laughs> of events that take place. I mean, they start from these little Little things too, like you know, the the little baby doesn't no longer wants to be breastfed by his mom. He's crying all the time. He cries when everybody holds him except for the nanny. To you know, it's important. Or, or my man Solomon. That's true. Yeah, he likes Solomon. That's true. He does. He does like <laughs> Solomon. You know, and then and then like important documents go missing, and then like there's this um, and then you know, I mean, speaking of Solomon, the most messed up thing happens. I mean, he is the he's the special needs uh caretaker uh, uh as far like groundskeeper almost in a sense he comes yeah, to to yeah. make a, a, a to build a this fence. was an interesting choice you with know his character yeah for me man because i feel like he could have just been a normal guy hired to build this fence but yeah. they made a special needs which gives it an angle i guess maybe i think it adds to the innocence it's a it's probably a wonderful representation but i don't know like in hindsight i think in um Maybe nowadays this film is made, you get a special needs person to actually play this role instead of um, Ernie Hudson, you know, well, you know <laughs> which is which it's weird, man. It, it kind of it kind of hits me like a little bit in, in a weird way, like radio did, man. It, it, when I when it, I seen that, like it might win for representation, but where it fails is you know, like like you said, the exploitiveness of it, and also once he is accused falsely of <laughs> doing something to this little girl mm-hmm. and uh i mean they didn't give they didn't give no crap about nothing i mean he was out the door yeah. faster than he came in no and questions and asked no due process kind no of thing I mean, bro. it was like terrible. God damn, it was I'm terrible like, like, and maybe could you could have had him maybe just get a little rough maybe they're playing and he pushed her down and that, that would be the issue but this just goes to like no. it just goes but to it's, so but dark it, it, it's it, dark it goes extremely <laughs> it goes extremely <laughs> to the dark side because this my man is, is painting the trim on the house and he's up on the ladder and he sees the nanny actually breastfeeding the baby and she's like yeah. oh yeah you know what I got something for your ass too yeah, it's that's like, illegal be, you know that's illegal I mean, I'm, that's I, mean illegal. I don't know I don't know it's not it was, uh, I, I don't think you can just you can just I don't think you 
you can just randomly breastfeed no, no, babies. No, no, no. no, no. Was, interestingly <laughs> enough, that is something that was done <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that is something. That was- <laughs> You said that's women shit now. <laughs> that's illegal. <laughs> if they don't know about it, I would say it's illegal. But sometimes, sometimes a nanny is brought in for, or back in the day, we're thinking about like I'm thinking about like slavery times when when, when sometimes the house or the help you know, or sometimes the slaves and they would have their kids, but they would also be, um, you know, breastfeeding the master's kid at the same time, and it was even crazy where they couldn't even use the same breast. They gotta have one for the master's kid and one for their own kids. It, it is crazy, but 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 yeah, you're not supposed to do this without the your boss's Express knowledge, written consent it's, you know, it's, of the parent. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not saying it's it's, it's, it's wrong, it's immoral, not illegal. But it's both. <laughs> but but like sometimes in if, if breastfeeding is preferred, then a person is hired for that and it's known amongst the parties and it's agreed upon. But but this is wild. Yeah, yeah. He knows. My man uh, and, Solomon knows it ain't right. He knows it ain't right. How does and, he know those? He a historian. Because he just he knows the he, rules. He just he just he knows, you know, I mean uh, he seems hip though, because he keeps like it's She's like, been giving him bad she's vibes been off rip though. Like, I mean, when he first meets her, he <laughs> shakes her hand, he gets a little bit of pain on her shirt. She was like what the fuck's wrong with you? He was like, it was an accident. I'm sorry. She was like, yeah. You shook my painty hand. Ac- accidents it, happen. It ain't like you your, your clothes I mean, ain't came from, um, uh, what's the store back in the day that where these would have came from? Damn, something with a B. This, it ain't Kmart, but she, it ain't like she wearing no polo or some Donna Karen. Come on, oh, son. A, uh, I, I keep wanting to say Barnes and Noble. I think it's like uh, uh, Brooks, so, Brooks Brothers. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know what that stuff right now. But, 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 but yeah, yeah, so yeah. so so Solomon Solomon he he's going with his gut, but they not listening to him. So she's still getting away. But that's why I like Julianne Moore's character as the friend. Okay, because she's the only one. She is the voice of reason. She don't trust this chick off rip. She's like, man, something wrong with her. I don't like her vibes. I don't like her energy. And she really chews up the scenery too. Like, you know, whenever she's on screen, she's adamant about her dislike for Peyton the nanny. And I like that. And I think that we should have gotten a little bit more of that. It could have added to the intense factor, like having, you know, this kind of like, you know, give and take with someone, you know, battling with Claire. Like, okay, you know, you got to look at the obvious, but then, you know, look at this. I don't just not like her because, you know, she's this attractive nanny and, you know, all this other crap that could be happening in your home. But I don't like her because something's off with this chick. And, you know what I'm saying? You need to listen to the voice of reason. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I like that. But, um, <clears throat> you know what, what, what kind of, you know, um, Rebecca De Mornay, as I kind of get mixed vibes with her as uh, as the villainess. Um, for for starters, I will say this: she's no Annie Wilkes. Annie yeah. Wilkes was yeah. so so. I don't convincing. think her acting ability is as high as as a um, Kathy Bates. You know, no. she she no. she's good enough here, but but this is kind of, and I think it mostly is the writing doing most of the work versus her performance. Yes, because, you know? I mean, there is times where she is, you know, she's kind of like, she's got the look, but she's still unconvincing. And I think that this is also, you know, a flaw in the script because I feel like, me personally, like, they made it seem like she's so hell-bent. Hell, hell bent. She's driven on, you know, overthrowing Claire and taking over her family and getting back what she lost. And she's evil and she hates them and she's going to get it. But they spent no time. There's a six months layover from the baby being born, from her miscarrying and then her showing up. They could have tapped into her crazy a little bit. Let us see her looking at some newspaper clippings or, you know, sitting in a dark room with some candles like, yeah, I'm going to get you, bitch. You know, something to, to kind of to kind of drive I think the, this the, thing the is crazy. already a little too long. I mean, so I'm no, well, figure, that, that's what I'm, I'm saying. No, to figure they, out where would you fit that in? No, they could have chopped out some of the yeah, extra yeah, filler. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. gave us some of her, you know, diving into the descent of madness a I mean, little bit to make that, it make a little scene, more sense. Though, I think the miscarriage it worked for me. I mean, it, it was just, she, she maybe, looked like somebody. That, maybe you maybe know, give us like a couple seconds or minutes of her, um, uh, maybe seeing a, a birth announcement in the paper or or, or kind of stalking them a little bit. Only just thing to, she saw just was, to show that she that saw the news move. and yeah. Claire was on the on the screen. Like, mm-hmm. I want to see her like sitting in the hotel room because she ain't got no house, and, you know, <laughs> lit by candles, yeah, and she's yeah. like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get these motherfuckers." Down. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm payback is mine. Mm-hmm. Something to you know, instead of her just you know, we see her you know, and almost feel bad for her because she miscarried, she lost everything. To then her showing up, stopping the bus, like. 
oh yeah, by the way, you know, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah, I ain't give, no nanny give, McPhee. Give us, give us I'm one. A, give, I'm gonna um, overthrow y'all shit. Yeah, give her one stalker scene because she, she ain't got the internet back then, so maybe she's doing newspaper clippings or some shit. She got, she got the wall on the on the room with the, 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 the you know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> Looking at it with the candle, like eating like chicken bones and shit, all yeah. crazy. But, but, but you know what it is, though, man. I, I do think there are some good things in it. Like I, I'm not a big fan of this film. Uh, rewatching it, I think I watched it when I was younger and I enjoyed it. It's a family thing. <laughs> this ain't really a family film, but '92, you know, we're renting shit and throw shit on, or whatever. You know, you know, got to got to look at uh, uh, Rebecca Bournay, uh, the Mornay's breast, which was a bonus as a kid. But you know, but it's weird watching it and you seeing. Some of the elements go down, man. Like, yeah. like I, I really do. Like, uh, Claire's got asthma, so that's being played into. So, so we do get some of those scenes where we do see uh, Mrs. Mott um, sabotaging her. Yes, um, she clearly stole my man's uh, work presentation. It's just wrong um, for that. She, she's <laughs> emptying out all of her <laughs> asthma um, vials, so so they're almost. Kind of, she she, <laughs> she sets the most sadistic. Trap in the the greenhouse with the shovel to make all the glass yeah, fall down kill, and kills ends up the friend. killing the friend. I mean, like shout that, out to uh, Juliet Moore because I think this is an early thing for her. Too. This was um, she yeah. wasn't she wasn't really a name no. like she is now um, no. back then. And, and what happened to Matt McCoy? Has he done other stuff? It seemed like he disappeared. Matt McCoy is that the dad? Um, yeah, yeah. I ain't seen him. In, he might be in like other Lifetime esque other style movies. Bad movies. Oh, he did do Police Academy Five. Um, he did a Police Academy, so he did a couple of Police mm-hmm. Academies. Um, recently, the Ice, Ice Road, Road um, but it didn't look like he really blew up. Like no, he, he did. Um, yeah. But um, he was good. And shout out to his one outfit that I thought was fire. There's a shot where he's got the um, the khakis on, and he's got this. Um, this green sweater that joint was hard. Yeah, it, was, bro. Yeah, it, was, and it looked like some um, some Air Monarchs. I don't know if they was out back then, but yeah, that, almost, I was like, I yeah. was like, yo, no, that was that was. I was like, he wearing that shit yeah, right there. Almost, that was almost that was like Heisenberg esque. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? so, yeah. I was like, he wearing that and, shit. And, and, and there 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 was some you know some like you said some shock value to this. I remember seeing this when I was younger. It hit me a lot harder because of the plot twist and because you know this. This concept and, and, and this style of, of, of film, this like, you know, um, the enemy in your home <laughs> style of film, I didn't see too many of those at my young age. You know what I'm saying? Like the only other one I really remember seeing was Stepfather. And, you know, and, and, and that one was conceptually was completely different than this. You, you know what it was? I don't think I cared about films like this back then. No. You know, like, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, and that's, that's the thing. Like, like to me, like this, this didn't really fall It transcended under. that because of the buzz like yeah. uh, i don't know it, what the box office oh no so is. so um, this movie it actually it made it, it pulled rank um it, it had a a 11.9 million dollar budget and it box office one 140 million yeah they killed so, it bro that's I, it it's yeah like, they probably it, did the same thing at home yeah the video it, I mean, sales dude it did it did uh it did it, it made headway there's a reason why you know i saw it why it was rented um when it dropped we didn't go see it in the theater but this mm-hmm. was definitely a, a a friday night renter uh in my household like you said we were talking about it earlier this this film is nostalgic uh it it did do what it was supposed to do when it first came out it just it doesn't really stand the test of time you know what's crazy though dude um so this is directed by curtis hansen Mm -hmm. curtis hansen also did eight mile (laughs) did la confidential uh he did the tie that bombs uh, I think he also did Get Rich or Die Trying. Like, this guy's got um, some some stuff under his belt, dude. That's kind of crazy. And I Actually, think this is the one that gave him headway, right? This, was, uh, this, was this his first one? No, nah, I don't think it was his first uh, one. But, um, you know, I, I could be. Let me see. 92. No, nah, no. Nah, he did uh, Bad Influence as well. Um, what's, is that the one with um, Sam? Oh, no, no, no. That's uh, Rob Lowe and uh, some other cat. But but he's got his, his filmography, at least feature films. He goes back directing wise. He goes back to 1970 in a film called The Arousers. Then his next one, Little Dragons, Losing It. Um, Losing It is one of the ones that gets mentioned in that 80s film, but I don't mm-hmm. think it's very good. Um, also, The Children of Times Square is a director of that. 
uh, the bedroom window, bad influence. Um, Hand of Rocks a Cradle, though. He made some money with that. Yeah. <laughs> and the River Wild is actually... The, that's a pretty that, crazy That film. one's cool. The one with Kevin Bacon. Uh, I think that's... Yeah, I think so. That's the one where he like he he's a killer and then he uh, is yeah. the mom and the son now with, on, uh, on the river. Uh, with, uh, what's her name? Um, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But see, but look at that. Like Conceptually, it's almost the same thing. It's like somebody... Being deceitful about who they are. This yeah. like, uh, okay, I'm really this psychopath, but I'm going to pretend to be a good person until you find out. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's like, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, this this like is just such an oversaturated concept. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't you know, man. I, I, in it. I feel like I definitely had a better reaction to it when I was younger. Watching it now was kind of a slog. You know, until, yes. the, until the big moments happened, it was kind of a just rough to sit through right now. And, yes. you know, but... And, and you know, another thing that, you know, I, I will point out is I think they did a, a pretty decent job at tension building in the first half. Um, they set the platform. Um, they gave us, you know, enough to kind of make it feel, feel tense. But where it fell short for me also was going into the third phase. It felt a little muddy felt a little rushed you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like it just it didn't hit as hard but thank goodness for what we did get in the first half because at least it made the third phase meaningful and you know ultimately we get to see solomon as the unsung hero you know what i'm saying he, he he comes back and saves the day which is good because i mean they pretty much painted him out to be one of the worst things that you could be mm-hmm. in the modern or past world and that's somebody who hurts children so you know at least he comes back he, he you know he gets a, a, an opportunity for retribution and saves the children and i thought that was really cool and you know ernie hudson probably is one of my you know favorite characters in this just because um you know the up until this point when i saw this film uh, initially only other ernie hudson experience i had was um and Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. So this, I mean, for, for me, it showed like versatility and range, um, you know, with his character as Solomon and, you know, him just, you know, coming off as this gentle giant. I thought it was really cool. Um, but, you know, like you said, they, they could have left the, um, the the mental aspect out of it. It might could have hit a little different, but, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. What, what, what can we do about it now? It's 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, so the name that I was trying to think of where she probably got her gear from back then. Remember Bradley's? No. <laughs> you don't remember Bradley's? No. Oh, my God. It was like a bootleg Kmart. Oh, you know really? what I'm saying? Like, Bradley's. like they were they were doing the kind of same. Oh, shit, see, man. I'm thinking of, of damn places that you, or brands that you find at J.C. Penney's or something. I mean, Bradley's. it was definitely along the line of that. Like, but I, I'm, you know, Bradley. But I'm, um, were, were, um, were those were those in the mo? Yeah, we had a few. Matter of fact, there was actually one. It's B R A D L E E S, man. And um, yeah, and they were around. And what ended up happening? I think Kmart ended up buying a lot of their mm. um, locations. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So so they were kind of doing the same thing, but she had a Bradley shirt and got mad because my man got a little yeah. paint on it. See, I, re- I don't remember but Bradley. Maybe, 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 but maybe that's how bad, down bad she was yeah. after her husband. I mean, well, shit. After her husband saying? died. She was, she was living in the hotel. Oh, man. You he know, had to have some bread left. Whatever. Right. You get the house. You can't sell that. You get, man, you know, she you didn't get, get nothing. All that shit was tied up in oh, lawsuits. Damn. Yeah. Oh. Remember? Yeah, she ain't have wow. nothing. They said they said you can stay in the house till you have the baby, and then you out the door because you know you you owe your husband owes everybody. That's four women that mm-hmm. um that that came back and filed this lawsuit. The only one that didn't actively pursue money was uh, Claire, the one who initially Damn, opened the door. The, the old logo road for the Bradleys. See, I don't remember Bradleys. I remember Ames. I remember you, see, Sears. You, 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 we got we got. There's a four year difference between us. That's which true. Is, that could be eternity if we're talking about eighties and nineties time. That's you know true. what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so like 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 by the time you would have probably been paying attention. Bradley's was on his way out because I remember being younger and maybe he went to Bradley's a couple times. Then it was Kmart. There was a time where mm. things was consolidating, man. I remember Dark Drug around here. Dark Drug? Dark Drug store. It was Dark Drug. Is that a right pharmacy? Aid. Pharmacy, yeah. Called Dark, Dark Drug. Dark Drug, bro. Wow. I had one right around the corner from me, wow. man. I used to uh, go in there. What mom, do you get there? My mom would send me to the store and I would, <laughs> and, and I would use her chains. <laughs> To buy comic books, <laughs> and then I got wow. crazy where I started just stealing shit because I'll be like, "Send me to the store for this." 
I'll go buy that, but oh, then I'm tucking God. a couple comic books in my jacket or a candy oh. bar. See, I remember or, or some garbage bell kids. I remember hey. highs. I got my case I got my Casey Jones Ninja Turtle from Highs, and that was the only place that had mm. the original slush puppies, man. Before oh, yeah. 7-Eleven had Highs, Slurpees. Yeah, yeah. 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 Highs, you said that. But then I remember Dark Drug got bought out by Fanals. And then um, and Rite Aid and there was a battle all all these drugs. Rite Aid got CVS. Yeah, CVS, Walgreens. And Walgreens like, comes out of left field and uppercuts <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a war going on at the Jeez. time, man. The 80s, hey, wow, man. Bro. Yeah. Everybody, my... everybody want to sell them drugs now. Yeah. There's that's, always been a drug war. That's where I was at, man. Because <laughs> my neighborhood right around the corner had the shoppers. It had the, the dark drug, which Jeez, cycled names drug. a couple times. Dark the, drug. Uh, you know, we had it. We still had Toys of Russia you could go into. Yeah. Bradley's, Kmart. It was different, though. The internet kind of messed a lot of stuff up, too. I'm pretty sure Damn. Well, um, Amazon probably killed, like, 30 or 40 uh, oh, <laughs> retail the chains. internet is what killed Toys R Us because Toys R Us killed KB Toys which mm-hmm. was like kind of more indie than I like KB. KB I KB did was too. Cool. Yeah. KB had some cool hey. cheap stuff. Like, yeah. You go in there with $20 on your birthday to KB and you come out feeling like a king, bro. Exactly. You're like, hey, I came up. You go to Toys R Us, man, you might get one and a half things. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> you get one toy and then a couple oh, quarters to ride that stupid rocket thing that just goes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I think we can wrap up, man. Uh, as far as Hands of Rocks and Cradle, it's okay, man. You know, it's not, I don't think it's must see. But you know, no. we, we do this, man, just to talk about and revisit things from 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 you know those eras and those back bygone days, man. Like like if you haven't seen it, I don't know if you need to go out of your way, but it, it's okay, man. It's a decent watch, especially if you're into melodramas and you know things like this with these kind of twists. It's just not, I would say, top of the pack. I think it will probably be upper bottom, bottom of the tier, pack. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you 100. percent Um, if you were to time capsule this, this is one that you have seen um a heavy de-escalation of it. You know, you know through the course of time. Um, just you know on the on the status bar, I guess would be the nice way to put it. Um, I'm not mad that we did this one. I'm kind of you know like you said we we are uh, unbiased film review show we will review any and everything that only criteria we have is that it has to be before 2000 so i'm glad that we got this one out the way um i probably will not uh have any need to watch this film again Mm -hmm. um and i'm not really upset about it i'm you know we we did it we came we saw we conquered we reviewed the hand that rocks the cradle (laughs) all right folks man we're gonna wrap this up it catches at Classes of Cinematics on Instagram and like and subscribe and turn on the notifications, man, to this thing. Cause without the notifications, man, y'all don't be checking in. I can see the numbers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Numbers don't lie. <laughs> yeah. But you can catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. This is Bobby Blockbuster. You can always catch me on the next show. All right, folks, we are out of here. Mm-hmm. Peace. Oh, oh yeah. Uh...